Hi, this is Lucien DH7LM for Hem Radio Soul. Today I would like to talk a little about dipole antennas, or more specifically, why the dipole antenna and the monoband dipole antenna is the best antenna there is. Now I admit, I admit that this is a, a bit of a clickbait title and uh, if you ask three hams you get 10 opinions or something. So um, it's a bit provocative but let me tell you what I mean. First thing to understand is that antennas uh, cannot do everything at once. It's like in every engineered system you simply cannot maximize every variable and uh, just make everything better. It's still, it's always, you know, you get something great and maybe something else you have to compromise and these kinds of things. For example, you can have a huge beam for 40 meter monoband beam and it's an amazing antenna but it's huge. I mean you need a big tower, it's heavy, it's difficult to construct them um, so you don't get it for free. You must uh, The compromise is that you need a lot of stuff around it and it's complicated. Um, likewise uh, if you have like a, a very short antenna like a mobile whip or something it, it works but uh, you know you get a small bandwidth, um, you get kind of an uh, inefficient system, um, so there's always compromises involved. And I think uh, when I look back, uh, when I started out in, in ham radio, um, I thought I can, you know, like erect one perfect antenna and uh, I can be QRV on each and every band and, uh, you know, I can get everything if I just find the perfect antenna that does everything and uh, after experimentation and gaining some experience I realized that this is this is simply not the case and uh, I think that the very best antenna indeed is a simple monoband dipole. Um, granted um, if you can erect a huge beam, a huge monoband monster then it, it, this will be much better than a dipole. Okay I get that but that's not the point. As far as uh, you know, like normal antennas, let's say, go um, wire antennas and not so huge and complicated stuff, then the, the dipole is kind of the reference antenna. And I think uh, for if you're a new ham, it's important to, to, to get that. The dipole will work great, you know, and uh, it's very, very, very hard to make a, a antenna that is better than a dipole and it's very very easy to make one that is worse. So I would suggest really start with a monoband dipole and see what it can do. If you can't put that thing up uh, at your home QTH then you know use it portable. It's, uh, it's, it's an amazing antenna and uh, I came to realize that this is really you know um, you have to experience this this thing first to to kind of know what 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 it can do for you and so you may wonder why why do I say monoband dipole what about multiband dipoles and here's the thing um, people and myself included always uh, think about SWR as kind of the holy grail uh, of antennas, you know, if you have like a very low SWR, then everything is perfect, everything is fine, everything works great. Um, but this is actually not true. Um, first of all, uh, if you have like a low SWR across the band, then it likely means that uh, somewhere energy gets lost and you know, your, your transceiver thinks it's low SWR, but it's only because, you know, like everything gets gets lost. And secondly, um, the losses induced by SWR aren't actually that high. If you have a, a slightly high SWR, you won't lose much of your, your energy, you know, depending on the feed line and, and such, of course. But uh, it's not the, your, your worst nightmare, <laughs> let's say. Um, so what, what I found after experimenting with multiband dipoles and, and all kinds of antennas is that uh, what really matters is the re radiation pattern 
um, that is uh, where you have your lobes, you know, in, in which direction the antenna will radiate the most. This actually matters for, 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 for the, the practice and it, it can really decide whether an antenna is fun to use and, and whether it's not fun. And to see what I mean, I got here, um, just me bring that up. I got here some, some radiation pattern uh, for like dipoles and uh, using different wavelengths. And um, this is if you have like a dipole for 40 meters, for example, and you uh, use it on 20 meters, then you're using it as a full wavelength antenna. Uh, so it's like 20 meters long for 40 meters and uh, for the 20 meter bands, 20 meters is one wavelength. So you might think, okay, I, I now have a multiband antenna. Uh, or if you have a doublet antenna, you know, the, with a ladder line, and a tuner, you might think, ah, I can get like a low SWR from 80 to 10 meters, that's perfect, I'm fine. Um, but uh, if you look at the radiation patterns, if you look at the lambda half antenna, half wavelength antenna, um, this is like the typical um, radiation pattern of a dipole. And um, so you see it, it's, it radiates to the broad sides of the, of the wire. This is the wire in the middle, um, the horizontal line, and these lobes are like the radiation pattern. It's a, it looks a bit more exaggerated on this graphic than it really is, um, but uh, it radiates more to the, to the broad side. So that's kind of predictable. So you, you can cover like all the stations that, that are within these lobes. You can have great contact. Now, if you look uh, at when you go up in frequency and you use the same wire, then all kinds of lobes start to appear. And, uh, you know, like here and, and two, two wavelengths. So if you have like a dipole for 80 meter and you use it on the 20 meter band, um, the lobes start getting weird. And it, they start get, getting weirder and weirder and weirder the higher you go in frequency. So now the problem is, and I, I have noticed this in practice, um, the problem is that um, you, you kind of never know um, if you can reach a station because uh, if it's the station is in one of these lobes, then fine. But uh, if it's not, then bad luck. So, and and that that's can be really frustrating um, uh, because you operate and, and you, you know, you hear CQ and the station doesn't hear you and you cannot break pileups and it's, it's, it's not, not a lot of fun. It's, and, and I noticed uh, specifically when I used a doublet antenna, so that means a, a dipole, kind of random length uh, dipole uh, with an antenna tuner. Of course I could tune it for, for every band, that's not the issue. But the problem is that it, it worked really, really well on the, on the resonant band. So for example, if I had um, like two times uh, let's say two times 20 meters, you know, like each side 20 meters long, then it would work really great on the 80 meter band, but uh, not so good on the, on the 40 meter band and even worse on, on the higher bands. And sometimes, and that's the thing with, with these lobes, right? Uh, sometimes it works amazing. You know, you, you, you hear a station, you make it even with QRP levels, you, you make a great contact and you're totally luck, uh, totally happy and then suddenly it doesn't work anymore because the station is just not in one of these lobes and, and that's really not a good experience. And, but on the, the band that, you know, the, the length approximately um, comes close to the, to the resonant frequency or if I have like uh, two times 10, 10 meters on each dipole side, then it works really well on the 40 meter band, but really only on, on this band. And I think that's the reason. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not the SWR or anything, it's the radiation pattern. And I think that that's really important to understand. Um, so you might ask, but uh, why would you want to limit yourself to one band? And uh, I think it's an interesting question. And when I started out, like most hands, I guess you, you kind of want to try everything and 
hop from one band to the next and, and all that. But uh, I found that it's not really so good um, an approach because um, you don't really get to know the bands. If you just hop around randomly, you, you, don't, you, you don't really get a feel for, for the bands, especially if you are more like a casual operator. For example, I am not operating that often. And um, so w when I switch bands all the time, then I, I just don't understand the, the specific bands. I don't understand the propagation. I don't understand the community because each band also has kind of a community, right? And that's also interesting, like for on 80 meters, you have all these um, nets, uh, you have all kinds of great activities and, and rack shoes and what have you. And you have kind of locals <laughs> on the band and the same goes for 40 meter. It's a different vibe. It's completely different situation, different countries that I hear. And obviously the same goes for the 30 meter band, 20 meter band and so on. So it's really great to have a monoband antenna because you really get to know this band. That's really cool. So you, you, you really learn one thing and learn it right. Yeah, so and uh, like if, if you don't want or can't uh, do something like that on your home Q QTH, then I would suggest that you try monoband antennas uh, in the field. It's really fun to, to be limited to, to one to one band. Um, limitations can actually give more freedom paradoxically because you, you really get to know the thing and, um, and then you can make full use of it. It's great. So that's kind of my point here in, in this video, especially if you're, if you're not an experienced ham, uh, to really try simple antennas, try a, a simple monoband dipole it's an amazing antenna. It works great. And if you don't, uh, if you can't uh, put up one of these, um, maybe you can look into NFET half wave antennas. I have one installed now at my QGH here and it works fantastic. It's basically just an NFET dipole. It's, it's the th same thing as a dipole, only that you feed it from the end and you need a little transformer. But it's the same radiation pattern, I think, and it's the same general uh, idea. So you could try that or as I said like a simple dipole. It's cool and it's the best antenna I think by far uh, short of like putting up a beam on a huge tower of course. <laughs> but other than that uh, before you you, you know um, dabble with the more complicated designs give it a shot and uh, see what you can do and pay attention to the radiation patterns. These are important. Okay, I hope uh, this was interesting to you. And uh, as I said, three hams, 10 opinions. This is mine. So enjoy the hobby, have fun experimenting in 73s. Bye bye.